Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. This time, we're going to talk about setting up a ubiquity access point in Docker for your smart home. Yes, that's right, you heard me. I've got several things running here at once. Now, let's kind of paint the picture here for what is going to happen. Now, here's our good old Raspberry Pi running Docker. Now, this is a ubiquity access point. This is actually the light. And this, for most residential situations, and even some businesses, this will be pretty decent. It's about 70, between 75 to 80 dollars on Amazon. Now, this little box over here is what's called a power injector. There is not, if I can get it picked up here, you'll notice on the bottom, there's only just the RG44 network connection. So you got to get power to it somehow. Well, this kind of access point is meant to have power come up over the Ethernet cable. So that's what this little gem does is feed power up to here. Now, if you have a PoE capable switch, then you're in a whole other ballgame. You won't need this, but not everybody does. Now, the other thing you're going to see is you don't have to worry about setting up VLANs and, and doing going through the whole process. I've got a very flat network in my home this automatically keyed right into it had no problems i was up and running in a few minutes so why don't we go ahead and get started here now this video is also available as an amazon flash briefing or podcast please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information for any items mentioned in this video, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button. Thumbs up. Now, here's what we're going to do. The first thing we've got to do is install the Ubiquity software. Now, if you go to their site, you're not going to see anything that's directly targeted at the Raspberry Pi. But by going to hub.docker.com, I was able to find one. And I had to go through several distributions to find one that would work. Now, you'll next thing is we'll get the we'll adopt the ubiquity access point. And that's just basically telling the control and the AP they're supposed to talk to each other. And then we'll talk about configuring. But I think you'll see this all can happen very quickly. And there's some things that we will explain along the way. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now we're switched over to looking at things from Portainer. Now, this is another one where you, I've got to take you into command line, but it's very straightforward. And this is a good way to learn more about it. There's one of the things that you will see referenced is something called Docker-Compose. And this is, I don't want to call it a scripting language, but that's it. It's close to it for for those that are not used to doing uh, anything with, with Docker or much on the command line within Linux. So I you've got the commands right here, and we're just going to execute them one at a time. And then you can see what's going on. And that way it makes the directory and changes to it. Now this curl command is kind of a command line way of getting to the Docker Compose script that's already written. And we'll paste that, and as you can see, it, it's done in a matter of seconds. So that you can't really complain about that one. And then, since we're already in the unified directory that this part made, we will just go through and tell that script to run, and then go ahead and bring things online. Now, go ahead and paste it here. And it acts like it, well, it's going to tell you it does a few things. And it's going to have to download a bit here. And I, I've been working with this a little bit, so I've, I've actually deleted some of the things that it already had because I wanted you to kind of get a sense for what was involved. But of the, I've tried about four different of the Docker builds for the Ubiquity Unify management platform. And this is the first one I could get to consistently work or didn't have errors. Now, if you have never worked with Docker Compose, or if you have run this script and got an SSL error towards the end, there are four lines that you'll see in the description, three of which, the last three you use if you've never had Docker Compose installed, and the first one you will use, and then the following three 
if you've got Docker and Compose and have had the SSL script running. So this is, I, I tried to make it as simple as it could, and I have replicated this multiple times before doing the video on it today. And we get got just a little more. This is the one uh, file that it's bringing down that does take a little bit to do. So, and as you can see, it's starting to fire right off again. So it, it, sometimes it may be a bit of uh, stop and start. And of course, we are kind of beating up on an SD card and a Raspberry Pi. So that would also uh, be working a little bit against us and these last two should complete pretty quickly because they're not not big at all creating unify so this is actually doing the last step and once it okay now it says it's done okay well now let's define done we'll go over here in portainer and we will Click here. Now you see it says it's running. Okay. Well, it's running-ish. Now, this is the first thing I've seen put an entry under stacks. Don't worry about it this, at this point. And we'll go to volumes. And you can see there's a whole bunch of things that it's created here. Again, this is how the person who set up the container for Docker chose to do it. So that's you know if that's what how he decided to do it then that works for me so you'll have to go https and we will then you see it's the ip address of your raspberry pi colon 8443 that's the management interface and then we'll click advanced and then proceed to unsafe which is really kind of a misnomer and as you can see we'll just take we'll just enter the name of the controller the way we want to have it oh and then we've got us add select add the accept the license agreement now if you don't have ubiquity account i've got the link on where to go through and do this and then we will enter the password and the interesting thing this will do, and you, you will, will, will talk about this in later video, you have remote manageability. You may want to turn that off, but that's this is just the default that it, it comes up with. Now, see, it's already found the access point, and this is where I showed you earlier. And so it's def defining the model, the IP address, the MAC address, and how long it's been up. So it's been up for a while, because I've been working with this a little bit. So we'll check the box. Now, what this will do is this will adopt the AP, and if you've just gotten the AP unboxed and from Amazon or wherever you got it, it's probably going to do a firmware upgrade. Now, this one's already had its firmware upgrade, so we're going to not have to worry about that. Now, the Wi-Fi setup, uh, this I'll just call it LWAP-U, and I will enter the SSID password. Now, you can have two and five gig Wi-Fi network names the same. I choose to keep them separate because some devices get confused and I just typically like to have a little bit of distinction and you'll see it, may, it makes a minor change in the, uh, in the two gigahertz name. And we'll click next and see it's already showing you. So I've got LWAP-U and then this is what it does is it takes it puts underscore iot it, i guess from their thought process it's going to basically you'll have a lot of your internet of things in here you now you make sure you got your country set right your time zone set right which for me is going to be chicago and it's configuring the controller and okay we'll go ahead and tell it to send you to ubiquity and we'll click on the access point. Now you see it says provisioning. So right now, all the configuration that we've built is going to be downloaded or uploaded, whatever the verbology you want to use, to the Ubiquity access point. Now, if it sensed it needed to do a firmware upgrade, before you saw provisioning, you would see something about upgrading. So it's just all in how 
the uh, how latest the firmware is on us but really as you're seeing this is very straightforward and this is probably you're looking at this now this is probably like the fifth or sixth time that i have done this install so i mean i went through it again and again and again to make sure it was consistent and it just has really done well so it's I'm, I'm 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 not used to seeing things that are this consistent so we should go it should change from provisioning to uh okay there we go now you'll see this message initially about not being able to connect it to the internal stun server ignore that that's at this point you see it up and running and i will switch over here to the dashboard view and at this point you don't see and you see it says connected so that's that's good we'll close this window out and see right now it shows no clients with wi-fi so i will shift over here on my samsung galaxy phone and then we will enter the passphrase for it and when you see this connecting from when you connect from another device you may initially get no internet message found and that's because it may still be figuring out what's going on or the test didn't complete like my, my phones are saying internet may not be available now it says connected because it did connect so you see now if we go back to the access point and Okay, that's not the view that I wanted here. Oh, we'll go down here to the devices. Now, it should show me there was a view I had earlier. Oh, clients. There we go. Okay, well, it shows you the client that's connected and the IP address that it has got. And, oh, there, map. That's what I was looking for, map. So that will show you at several things at a glimpse. It shows you the channels that it's using for both 2.4 and 5 gigs shows you the MAC address and if we tell it link label now we want link label on and then it shows you the SSID that my Galaxy is using again the channel number and how strong the signal is because that this is something when you're trying to troubleshoot wireless connections that is very handy to have so as you can see it's very straightforward to get up and running well as you can see I mean this I think has been a far easier uh, setup to do than I would have expected and I know when I set up my ubiquity uh, edge router to be my interface to Google I went through some pain and torture with that one because there was things I even though I'm used to dealing with Cisco gear with some juniper this was even more different than that but as you can see you literally just follow a few steps where you have to be in command line on the raspberry pi to get things running in docker and then give it about 30 seconds to a minute and you will get the management interface to come up on 8443 and you saw just what few steps it was and then it was up and running now there's one other thing I want to make sure that you get to experience and that's the going to be what you can do on your smartphone and this is the ubiquity unify app that's on here and it's pretty much like what you're going to see on the web interface but it just gives it to you uh, right at hand you get a lot of good stats you can dig into the radio information you can see the the channel numbers the bandwidth of the channel the just, there's just a lot of, of good information on here so you can you know you see right now this is the only client I've got on here because once I took the controller down to do the reinstallation then my uh, laptop quit talking to it but that's you know neither here nor there but it shows you the the the, the transmit data rate the 
signal level and basically to help put the signal level in context for you the lower the number the better it's when you start getting above 70 things are going to get a little dodgy because it's not going to get a real good signal at that point you won't be going back and forth a lot statistics i mean this if you have more than one access point and I, and I may actually go to add a second one in my house probably for the basement but once i put the access point in its final position i may find that i may not need it and then more so you get hotspot manager there's some other things we'll be doing videos but i wanted you to see that especially if you really want good wi-fi for your house and right now the access point's been sitting in a very uh, poor location and i'm getting better throughput with it than i have with the other things that i've been been trying so i think very quickly i'm probably going to move over to using the the ap all the time and just shut down wireless on my uh internet router that i've got and it's been pretty good but this is better and with having 802.11 ac on it this gives you room for growth so as you get more and more of your devices refreshed and they become newer then you're going to have even better speeds out of it so at this point you're going to see videos to my right or to my left that are the next steps and the ones you've already watched in this series or other content that i've produced if this video helps you provides value please click on the like button thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to the channel already please click on subscribe and enable notifications if you have anything that you'd like to see me do with the ubiquity please let me know i'd be happy to do that as future content because i'm really enjoying how easy the uh, the ubiquity software was to set up and get talking to the ap it's far better than i experienced so thank you for your time and we'll see you in the next video take care